Hey guys, welcome back. It's the fourth episode. I'm really happy that I can make a movie again because um, you see some crotches in the back and it's actually not the best uh, time of the year for me. Um, there was a planned knee surgery. Everything went very well, but I cannot walk for almost two months. So I have to use those uh, red sticks and it's not bad, but it is a whole new process to learn walking again and it's really hard i cannot use my knee a lot uh, i cannot bend it for for weeks so i really have to be uh, very careful other than that i make this movie because i want to update you guys i had 10 days of filming and i forgot some intros i got forgot some outros i've got some sometimes to talk during the videos so actually what i did in this episode the fourth episode is I cut down all the 10 days and I will put them in parts from the beginning of the mast when I swapped the boat and I got the mast for free with it, of course, until I placed the mast. And this is, I don't have knowledge of building a sailboat or uh, refurbishing a sailboat. And I completely, completely messed up with the time plan for the mast. In my head, I knew there was a mast. I knew there were lines. I knew there were a lot of electrics inside, of course, but I had no clue that the mast was in a bad shape. The roller furling was bent and it was crooked so much that I had to take every one and a half meter um, piece out and replace one piece in the middle. But if the pieces need to go out, the whole rigging needs to come out. Then I found out that the rigging was damaged. Whew, that was a bit of a story. So you will see that later on. Um, then I found out that within this mast, the original riggings from 1978 uh, were there. So I called the insurance and I said, well, if I want to sail to England or Scotland or maybe the Nordics someday in the coming 10 years, what is the rule of the riggings? Because some might be damaged. And they were like, there is a very easy rule within the waters of Holland. So the internal waters of Holland, you, we don't have rules. You just can sail. If you cross onto seawater, the riggings, are gonna be insured. They cannot be older than 15 years. So there was a huge problem because some experts told me that reggings are very expensive. And I found out. <laughs> so yeah, guys, um, it's a quite long intro, three minutes already, but um, I will take you in the full process. And sometimes after a day or two days, I will cut the movie, talk to you, and start in the next movie. So um, in this case, we can still have a, a full episode on how to repair or refurbish a mast because there's not a lot, there's not a lot of information about this process. So um, I will give it to you. If you like it, subscribe and uh, you will see some other uh, interesting parts. Enjoy. All right, the mast in old uh, shipyard in Amsterdam. The roller furling looks okay. The rigging, yeah, it still moves, so that's probably okay. Then there is the crooked part of the roller furling, really bad because they put it uh, crooked in the uh, storage. Some riggings are uh, taken off to have less tension. Some broken parts are broken there. <laughs> So yeah, it's super green, it's really dirty. And this actually was a day where I started cleaning. And yeah, the boom looks good, but it is all dirty. To see the mast coming back in its original color um, the aluminum color is really really nice and uh, 
yeah, I think uh, not everything came off, but it is such a huge difference if you need to pick up something that it's clean. Because my marina is in the middle of uh, the Netherlands. Um, it's called Marina Muiderzand. And I need to pick up the mast really far um, on the other side of the big lake in the north of Amsterdam. So what I actually did before I... Um, uh, I started this mast project. I sailed, I bought the boat in Permanent. I sailed it back to Almere, Marina Meiderzand. Then I prepared, I cleaned the mast as you just saw. And then I sailed the boat via the big lake to uh, Amsterdam North. So I didn't have to pay for road transport. In the meantime, I fixed the whole boat, the engine, etc. I put on the mast and then I sailed back to another yard in Naarden and that's the place where I could lay it down for two months to work on it and uh, that's what you're gonna see right now so this was a bit scary because I had to cross the lake with a boat I don't know and actually I just uh, renewed the whole uh, fuel system the diesel system from this old Volvo Penta it wasn't running when I bought the boat when I trade the boat so yeah this was uh, quite uh, an interesting part coming into Amsterdam North is really amazing these boat houses are next level Everything tied up together. Let me walk up to the front and then you can see the whole installation. And yeah, we're back on the big lake. Uh, I've got a good friend with me. Hey, come on. It's really an adventure because as I told you, it's really um, yeah, exciting, but also scary to use a diesel engine that you don't know, to seal a boat you don't know. But everything went very well, so really happy. Coming back at the marina right now, and this is the Narden Marina. And they actually were so kind to put a mast on um, the storage for two months for a really uh, good price. Because back in my marina, it's uh, five kilometers away, um, they said, No, sorry, we don't do this longer than two weeks. So I called the different one and it's actually nearby so uh, it was really good so uh, we laid it down uh, I did some checks and went back home and of course when I was home I got very good news the next day um, there arrived a big package and this was actually kind of um, uh, unexpected because I was researching online how to clean this mast um, because the green is off, but it is really hard to get everything off the material. Um, you didn't really see that in the movie so far, but there is still a layer of dirt. Um, so I was reaching out to companies and actually Zap Europe, an amazing, uh, I met an amazing guy uh, via email and he fully supports the project. So he saw the one and uh, I sent him the episodes and uh, he was stoked and he told me Wow, that's cool. We're gonna send you products and uh, just let us know if you uh, if you like them. So uh, I was kind of excited to uh, introduce you to the next part of this movie. So I'm super excited to show you this. Zep Europe sent me two big boxes of supplies. Look at this. They actually believe in the Dufour 31 feet project and sent me all of these products. Okay, update time for the mast, that's mine. So I've been cleaning a lot and as you saw in the previous movies, it was super green and most of the dirt came off, but some dirt stayed on the mast and it looks like it is penetrated inside, inside the aluminum. And that's really, really a pity because there you see a clean mast and here you see the greenish, yellowish, brownish, uh, Thing. I don't know the name but it is still dirty and when I go 
and do this with my finger, you see that it comes off. See that? But it is not doable with the finger. Um, <laughs> the brush also doesn't work. So have to be careful because it is corrosive. Don't work with your bare hands, but get some gloves and make sure that you mix it one on three in water and then this one in. Make sure that you mix it. There we go. And I will demonstrate it a little bit because you can see how good this product is. Just slowly but firmly. And there you go. You see the difference? And this is actually so good. So after you get the water and you see that that one row is very nice. So it takes a while to do the whole mast and the other side. I'm super happy with the product and be careful because it is a corrosive product and the mast has a special material on it that makes it not corrosive. <laughs> so when you get that layer off, it's not very good for your mast. But it says in the manual that if you don't put it on pure and leave it for 24 hours, then you're fine. So make sure you mix it correctly, one on three. And if you mixed it, then you just clean it after you use a bunch of water to get it off. And I am super happy with the result because this mask is going to look new again. On to the next part. And actually these are uh, the riggings. So I got a contact with a uh, company or actually I contacted four companies and this company came out uh, uh, as one of the best in Holland. It's called CS Rigging. It's in north above Amsterdam. And I had a good chat with the guy. He said, come over. And um, But before I came over, uh, I challenged them to um, answer some questions. Um, I wanted to renew three or four riggings out of eight. And they actually told me, sorry, we don't do that. We do all eight or none. And I was like, what? <laughs> this is gonna cost me a lot of money for something that is still good. And he was like, well, there's one super simple answer. You go with your sailboat to the Nordics. And if you only renewed two riggings and the mast fell off by heavy weather, imagine it happens. Who are you gonna call? You're gonna be so angry at our company because we renewed your riggings. But we don't get in this area. We, we don't want the gray area. So all of them or none. And that was actually, he convinced me because I'm not sure if I uh, want to go to sea water and cross the uh, big sea, but I want to make sure that the riggings are in good shape. Also, if I want to sell this boat someday, um, it, it, it's a really, really nice plus that all the riggings are completely new. So uh, we went for this option. He invited me over to uh, his company and uh, I'm gonna show you some uh, shots from this uh, working place.
This looks really nice. Everything comes together and the next project is uh, to finalize the uh, electrics. about the roller furling actually they put it uh, back in the storage and they put one pipe one profile under the mast and it was there for three years so within these three years within these three years it is gonna bend 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 and that's why I have a broken profile the roller furling is completely disassembled because I bought new riggings. I was looking for the word. <laughs> so I disassembled the whole roller furling. And line it up together to see if everything is correct. This is the new one, and you see the clear difference in quality. <laughs> this is the new one. And I am putting it all next together that I can see that's gonna work. So this is the end part. This will go in here. Then this one goes on top and that fits nicely with two screws. I bought them already and then the end and this will pop out so it looks good i'm gonna start mounting Look at that, it's almost back in place. All right, it's done. Super happy guys and uh, see you later. Another rainy kind of day working on the mast. And actually I bought this new antenna VHF. comes actually out of it and I want to make sure that it comes from that hole in the inside and I need to bring it to this 
port in order to be good. So that's a job for later. I'm super happy because the cable is completely through. The old one is broken, the new one is in. So I'll leave this for now because I need to some space and I need to redo these bushings because they look not super nice at the moment. And then I'm gonna finalize it. So tied it up nicely, the new riggings, the three color on top of the mast, the steam light when you have the engine on, the deck light, the lab one that is there, and the VHF antenna, coax antenna. So wrapping up my old stuff. And a very successful day again. Sad weather, <laughs> but we keep on working. Are you guys ready? Look at that. They placed the mast for me on the boat. Such a huge boat, my god. And I have to bring it to the other side of the lake. But work in progress. Super happy that it works. Look at that, everything is here. Super nice. Believe it or not, but I forgot to make movies during the installation of the mast. So we've got some professional photos. <laughs> have a look. to laugh a bit because it's so stupid I completely forgot to make movies during the mass placement on the boat and that was actually the most exciting part because it was windy it was rainy there were five people placing the mass back um, including myself and we had the whole tide on the mass because the wind was heavy so this sounds all very cool but <laughs> I completely forgot it um, it's good to tell you that uh, the mast project, I completely underestimated the time I had to invest. I think maybe it, it, it were 15 full uh, days or, or not full days, but hard working days. And I think about 2000 euros in total for new gear, for new electrics, for uh, the Duralec paste, for pop nails, uh, cleaning products, etc, etc. So... Uh, it was really nice and um, after this uh, shot you will see the complete the entire boat and the walk around and I go inside the boat so you can see the interior again because I love the interior it's super wide it's three three meter forty wide and it's super spacious so have a look around and I hope to see you again in the next movies please like and subscribe because that helps me uh, growing ciao